This video is a continuation of my ongoing project to recreate Danielle de Barbarock's ball gown from the 1998 film Ever After. Please check the description box for previous episodes. Okay, we start this segment about a day and a half before I left for Pennsylvania to visit some friends and do some fabric shopping and antiquing. But before I left, I had one goal, to cut out and sew the bodice. Let's talk fabric. The theory on the Ever After costuming website is that the bodice is made of two layers. A layer of the silk satin from the underskirt, and a layer of the crushed organza from the overskirt, just ironed smooth. I have tested this, and I don't believe the overlay on the bodice could be the crushed organza. Because when you iron it out, it may lay flat, but the fibers of the satin are permanently warped and will never sit perfectly smooth. So I got back on the website where I bought my crushed organza for the overskirt, and found that they do have a non-crushed version. Silver white, the same silk and metallic content, a perfect match. So I bought one yard of that. In the last video, I made a mock-up of the bodice that I intended to use as an inner lining, since the silk satin is so shifty. But when the new organza arrived, I found it to be a very stable fabric, and paired with the satin, I decided that they would be strong enough together. Which is good, because I don't actually want to use this mock-up bodice anymore. Here's why. That V in the center? I realized that the original bodice isn't actually exactly a V. It's more like an inwardly angled princess seam. There needs to be some space in the center for the bullion trim to fit. So I took my bodice pieces and I drew a new line on the side front. I removed the excess from that piece and added it onto the center front, and here's what they look like. The base of the center front does dip up into a weird V, but that's because of the way that I've curved the bottom edge of the bodice down beneath the bust. I also decided to combine the strap piece with the center front. I thought it'd be kind of neat and seamless that way, but I was worried about cutting a structural piece like that on the bias. However, someone in the comments had pointed out that cutting the strap on the bias would help it to curve over the tip of my shoulders better, so I decided to give it a try. I also did one last adjustment to my back pieces. If you remember, I had thought the princess seam was too wide, so I'd curved it in closer to the center. Well, now I changed my mind and curved it back out a bit. I made one last mock-up, just to check everything out, and I approve of it. Everything looks good, and it's time to cut out the fabric. <laughs> this was a bit nerve-wracking because I had barely any silk satin left, and if I messed it up, it wouldn't be as simple as shelling out cash for another yard. I had hand-dyed the fabric, which was not a smooth process, and I didn't see trying to color match the dye as a viable option. <laughs> so better not mess up. Now, for the center front, if you remember, in the last video, I was discussing my dilemma with the fabric choice for it. The Ever After costuming website speculated that it was not lined, and actually transparent behind the lace. I wasn't convinced, but I couldn't tell for sure, and I kind of liked the idea. Well, I think I figured it out. In this photo, the light is shining very abrasively on the dress, highlighting a few things that I hadn't been able to catch before. You see this shimmer here? It's coming from behind the gold lace and behind that just looks ivory. Yes, the mannequin is ivory, but so is the satin from this angle. To me, the center front, behind all of that lace and appliques, looks like it's exactly the same as the other front pieces, an underlay of satin with an overlay of organza. Also, I don't think it even could be transparent, because it has to be worn over a corset to support the wings, and you would definitely be able to see that through it. And you can't even see the seam allowances or anything where the neckline meets the lace, so the most logical answer is that it's just satin and organza. However, it turned out I didn't actually have enough satin for the center front panel. Take note, four yards of 45 inch silk satin is just barely not enough for this project. So I thought, can I make it transparent anyways? And then I thought of something better. What if I line it with a nude fabric, like what the mesh of the sleeves is lined with? That way I would get the benefit of it looking like it could be transparent without having to deal with the problems that that would cause. With the underlay of every piece cut out, I just had to cut the matching overlays from my organza. Then I decided to be just a little bit more professional and I ironed every piece before I started sewing anything. Okay, so excuse the mess, but it happens to be a pretty good representation of my brain right now. So I stayed up past 11 last night, hand basting 
the silk organza to the silk satin. And let me just say, this fabric, I am so excited. I have never in my life been more sure that it's correct. Like, I, it's behaving in ways that I didn't predict, but that perfectly match up with the original photos. The way it is so shifty and looks so different in different lights, um, the way that it contrasts with the silk satin, the way that it is, it's much more gold. I can't seem to get the gold to show up on camera very well, but it has, it's not like a rich gold. It's like a champagne gold kind of tone to it. Um, I also really love this. In this lighting right here, you can see how different these colors are, but in other lights, especially when the sun is on them, like the silver just glows over top of both of them and the colors really mesh up very well. Like you can barely even tell this is a different color depending on the light, which is awesome. Um, so a couple of issues though. One, this crease right here, I ironed the snot out of it and it will not go away. And because of how shimmery this fabric is, it's really obvious and it's on a piece where it's going to be front and center. So I have just enough of this fabric left that I think I can squeeze out another version with no creases. So I'm going to recut and rebaste those two pieces. My other dilemma is I am literally about to leave town like tonight and I'm going to be gone for a whole week. So my plan had been to be hand stitching the bullion trim that whole week, like as my project. And I was going to take it all with me and just knock it out. However, because of the golden tone that these have developed, I'm just not happy with my silver. It's just, it's very dark looking. It's very gray toned looking compared to the champagne of this fabric. So I'm thinking I need to reorder. I don't want to make something that I'm not going to be happy with the color of, especially if I'm going to spend a whole week hand sewing it. Like compare it to this antique bullion trim that I bought a little bit of. This one's kind of a faded gold. It's like right perfectly in between silver and gold and it looks so great with the color of this. And I'm thinking that this is what the original color was closest to, not this. So I think I need to reorder. The only problem with that is that the place I bought it from, it took a long time to get it last time. Like it took almost a month. So that's frustrating. Um, so my dilemma was what am I going to work on during this week? What am I going to get done? And I decided to basically work on everything I possibly can. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking all of my lace and beads that I've accumulated so far. I am missing a few, so I'm not sure how much of it I'll be able to use yet, but just in case I'm going to take it all. A lot of it will come down to chance though. The two uh, beads that I'm still missing, I ordered and sent to my friend's house in Pennsylvania. So we'll see if those even arrive in time for me to use. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna pack, I'm gonna finish these pieces and then I'm gonna pack all of this stuff in my suitcase and take it with me on vacation. Okay, picking up where I quit last night, I recut the organza overlay from the side fronts. There are other permanent creases, but they're all in places where they'll get covered by trim, like the center front. These were the only two lines that really bothered me. So I'll seam rip the basting from those pieces and then hand stitch around them one more time. The bodice pieces are all prepared and I'm just going to take things slow and smooth, starting with the side seams, pinning them together, sewing them, ironing them open, and then moving on to the princess seams.
Okay, one thing I want to point out, um, I think there's a slight issue just with this curve right here. It's sitting completely flat. There is no bubble. There's no, you know, room being built into it for the shoulders like there ought to be with a princess seam. However, this does actually kind of work out because I was thinking that the lines didn't exactly match up with the original picture. It almost looked like this should come down further, but I wasn't sure how to make that happen since like it needed to line up with the strap too. However, I think it works. What I'm going to do is seam rip just this top portion right here, and then I'm going to sew the top of this onto the strap so that they are one piece. And then I'm just going to leave this edge alone, but slide this one underneath it more. So it'll kind of come in a little bit further like that, which will kind of cut out some of the space on the back, like armpit area. And I think that will make it match up with the original better and also fit better because there'll be a curve there now. Okay, and that is all I have time for. It is now time to pack my stuff and get out of here. The next day saw me in Decatur's airport. This is an airport so tiny that most people in Decatur aren't even aware that they have an airport. And guess what? My 9am flight was delayed. There were only a dozen people waiting for it, so they just came out and told us what was going on. Apparently, the pilot had started the engines and a warning light flickered on. <laughs> he, like, tapped it and it turned off. He restarted the engine and it stayed off, but the damage was already done. He had seen it, and now, for liability reasons, the plane needed maintenance. That's just how airplanes work. <laughs> My brother-in-law's an airplane mechanic, and I've realized that he has the exact perfect personality type to be an airplane mechanic. He's like, well, if there are two manuals, and one says to check this part every 7,000 miles, and the other says to check it every 8,000, we're checking it every 7,000. So the pilot said that the flickering light was probably nothing, but the mechanics had to come check it anyways and sign off on it. However, Decatur doesn't have their own maintenance crew on site. One needed to drive in. The situation turned hilarious when we heard that the nearest crew that could drive in was from Chicago. So let me get this straight. A crew needs to drive down from Chicago just to sign a piece of paper so that the plane can fly to Chicago. I considered canceling my flight and just driving up myself, but honestly, the main reason I didn't is because they told me that I couldn't cancel it at the desk. I would have to call into customer service. So like, never mind. I guess I'll just sit here and sew for five hours. <clears throat> so I started by working on the neckline. I wanted to base down the edge for security, to minimize fraying, and just to make it look nicer. I had an idea to trim down the inside edge and fold the organza over top it as I sewed, just to make the edge finer. However, then I moved onto the underarm and did the exact same trimming for some reason. I have no idea why. I think sometimes when you're doing a familiar thing in an unfamiliar setting, you're more liable to make dumb choices. Trimming down the silk satin here served no purpose other than to weaken the underarm and give the sleeves less to grip onto when I do sew them on. So I'll probably have to move that seam in by maybe another quarter of an inch. And that is all for this video. The next one will pick up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I know it's kind of a weird place to leave off, but eh, this way I won't have to cut out any of the antiques and lace footage. So I will see you next time.